In this video, I give an overview of the Heathkit IO4205 dual trace oscilloscope, a piece of vintage test equipment offered in kit or fully assembled form by the Heathkit company in the 1980s. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. An oscilloscope is a type of electronic test equipment that allows electrical voltages to be observed visually, usually in the form of a graph of voltage over time. Many oscilloscopes use a cathode ray tube, much like a television. Over the years, Heathkit's line of test equipment typically included a number of oscilloscopes with various price ranges and features. In fact, the company's first electronic kit was the O1 oscilloscope, introduced in 1947. It sold for $50, a price that they achieved by offering it as a kit and using some warp surplus parts. The IO4205 was a dual-channel oscilloscope offered by Heathkit from 1979 to 1987. My 1982 Canadian Heathkit catalog listed it at a price of $549.95 as a kit and $999.95 fully assembled. The assembled version was known as the SO4205. I've seen another undated US catalog that listed it at $329.95 for the kit and $480 assembled. It was a mid-range scope. The IO4105 was a lower priced unit that was essentially the same but with a single trace for about $150 less. My 1982 catalog also lists the 35 megahertz IO4235 scope for $1,799.95 as a kit representing their high-end model. In addition to the scope, you would need one or two probes that sold for $59.95 each, and if building it as a kit, you typically needed to purchase the oscilloscope calibrator kit at $119.95. The most important specification of an oscilloscope is its bandwidth, the range of frequencies over which it can accurately display signals. The IO4205 is a DC to 5 MHz scope. At the time, this was pretty reasonable and suitable for most analog and digital circuits. This is a dual channel scope, meaning that it provides two independent channels, although they share the same horizontal time base circuit. The display is 8 by 10 centimeters. The vertical sensitivity went as low as 10 millivolts per centimeter with 11 calibrated voltage ranges in a 1 2 5 sequence. The horizontal sweep rate went from 200 milliseconds to 0.2 microseconds per division in seven ranges. It provides channel 1, channel 2, external and line trigger sources with AC, DC or TV trigger modes, plus or minus slope, automatic or normal trigger. The advantage of a dual channel scope is that you can display two waveforms at once. It can also operate in an XY mode where one channel drives the vertical and one the horizontal. Let's have a look at the front panel controls. I'm showing here a 1 megahertz sine wave from a signal generator. We can see that the amplitude is about 5 volts peak to peak and the period is about 1, min one microsecond corresponding to 1 megahertz. So let's run through some of the controls. We have uh, intensity control, adjusting the brightness of the, of the trace, focus, trigger level, which we can adjust to trigger on the corresponding position of the waveform, and horizontal position. Now I'm looking here at channel 1. We can adjust the uh, volts per centimeter if desired. Um, we can also change the sweep rate to something lower and adjust it here if we take it out of the calibrated position. I can also switch to uh, channel 2, which is also showing the same input. Or we can switch to the alternate mode, where it alternates and we can see both traces. On triggering here, we can select whether the triggering is channel 1, 2, an external input or line input. We can select whether the triggering is AC, DC, or a television type signal 
plus or minus polarity in the auto or normal triggering mode. Down here we have uh, Y position for each of the traces and uh, here we have a 1 volt 60 hertz test signal external trigger input, ground, and an external input. If we increase the frequency, the amplitude drops off as we exceed the bandwidth of the scope. It was rated as within plus or minus 3 dB to 5 megahertz. My testing shows that it drops off quite slowly and higher frequencies can still be observed, just with reduced amplitude. Here's a look inside the unit. It's all solid state except for the CRT. Circuitry is on three printed circuit boards with some point-to-point -point wiring. Whoever built this unit did a nice job. Know that there are some very high voltages present, about 1600 volts, so use extreme caution when working on a unit like this that has a cathode ray tube. Oscilloscopes were always quite expensive items and not many hobbyists could afford a new one. The IO4205 was quite a good value for an oscilloscope. The IO4105, the single channel version, was even more affordable. There were less expensive scopes on the market, but they tended to have lower bandwidth, sometimes only audio frequencies, not be calibrated in the vertical or horizontal, and sometimes have a simple recurrent rather than triggered sweep. Features that you might want that are lacking in this model are a Z mode, which allowed varying intensity, and a higher bandwidth. I purchased this unit in October 2011 from a local radio amateur, along with a digital scope and a Heathkit frequency counter. I cleaned it up a little, but not much else was needed. I bought some low-cost modern scope probes to use with it. To be honest, I purchased it more as a collector's item rather than to use. My regular scope is a more modern BK Precision 30 MHz dual channel scope. The calibration is a bit off. I was able to find a schematic on the internet, but not a full manual. I recently ordered a manual so I can do a full checkout and calibration of the unit. When I was about 16 years old, I dreamed of owning a decent oscilloscope, and this is one of the models that I looked at. At around $500 for even the single channel version, it was too expensive to justify for a student who made about $4 an hour at a part-time job. Finally getting to own one years later is a real kick, even if it's no longer state of the art. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage Heathkit amateur radio and test equipment.